So I went and had a look around and I found these plans on the internet and sort of didn't find too much information on certain things. So I just really want to show you guys what little things about making it and uh, are annoying. I'm not going to go through the whole plans because I had a lot of little bits of trial and error working things out and it's just a pain to keep filming it. So I didn't bother filming it, but I just wanted to show you through the process of what I did with it and you know how it's all kind of put together and what you kind of need and bits and bobs you can get the plans i'm going to put the plans in the description or the list of things you need anyway you can buy them things are might seem a little bit pricey but they are worthwhile doing because you'll get a better looking scope um this isn't finished at all this is just wired up really rawly because i just wanted to see how it was working and work it out to make sure it is working before I put any kind of insulation on it because some of the tubes you know they've got beautiful plastic tubes and people have put little names on them I'm not at that stage yet I just wanted to get to the stage see it working look through it and go yes got it bam so here we go so what I got was a little battery pack right battery pack and it's got just two positive and negative wires coming off them and a little switch built into the battery pack you can get these on eBay I got this from China for about two quid just this little battery pack and um, the most important thing you need is what you see here and this is the intensifier tube now this is a generation one this goes I haven't even looked into the generation two and three but you can see here it's the P8079HP um, these are kind of pretty amazing really they they basically light up the actual tube so what you're doing is actually pl plugging some electrical source into the tube and then that is intensifying the light that's going into the tube but obviously you need to be able to see that so you need to be able to put a lens on one side and you need to put some sort of viewfinder on the other so you can buy a viewfinder you can buy something high tech and go for it really expensive but you know you, you just want to build it cheaply first of all just to see how it's all working so you know you, you're not wasting your money you're not kind of going in and spending out money and ordering things you don't need so what i've got here is uh i used a little um what's it called a little jeweler's piece and then i've stuck it inside uh this it's called what was it called a uh, vertex Vert Vetus, a Vetus hose pipe uh, connector. So you can cut this down and this gives you the exact measurement you need between the eyepiece and the actual intensifier tube to get the actual direction. Now you can, you don't have to buy this Vetus. I worked out afterwards after buying it all. It costs like 14 quid and there's not a lot of places that sell them. You could probably go into a plumber's merchants or building merchants and find other little pieces that can do it. But the nice thing about this is it gives a nice distance between the tube and the eyepiece. So you just get a really nice lens. Um, when you're looking through it, you can just really, you know, it gives it a nice clear image. And what I've gone moving on up to here, um, what this is, this is a 35mm lens camera from a lens the SLR camera. And bought this on eBay for about 25, 30 quid. Came with the camera. Um, you can see at the moment it's just sliding off and I really just did this just to get the distance in between from the lens to the actual intensifier tube. Now from looking into it and all I read up about it it's like you the actual lens because it's a 35mm lens you've got to do it 35mm from the actual piece of equipment or whatever if that was your eyepiece that would be... 35 mil so you go from the the lens to so you could actually get a clear image and focus it I, I don't know how true that is i kind of cut down a bit of toilet roll put it around and kind of just keep measuring measuring it down until it got to a certain length and then i've what i've kind of done is put a little adjuster on it which i'm going to kind of cement up and get looking a lot better because it's looking a bit scrappy at the moment but it's just to give the idea i just wanted to see this working so this is why i've built it like this so anybody that's expert um builder uh, extraordinaire and has got their whole workshop laid out please bear with me this is built on a desk with a few screwdrivers and blue tack and all bits and pieces i haven't got a studio to work in so 
I've built this really like really amateur, but it works. So the main thing is it works. It doesn't matter, you know, how it's looking at the moment. Um, that's all going to be improved, and you know we can come onto that. So basically, what you're doing is you've got the uh, what was the other important thing was the lens mount. Now, I was gonna, I brought some lens mounts, and then I thought they didn't fit the SLR camera. So what I did was I just ended up taking off the mount off the actual camera, which is just really easy. The old SLR cameras are all little crosshead screwdrivers, just kind of take, cool, come apart really easily, and you can just take off the actual um, uh, mount. So then you can actually mount the actual lens onto here, and you can see. If I just uh, you go slide it off a little bit there, and you see, um, I've put that. And what I did with that piece there, and it's looking really scrappy at the moment, but as I said before, you can make it, you know, you can do it if you've got your workshop and you've got the ability. But I attached that to a metal tin um, from a tin can. So I just literally, like, put the actual, drilled the holes in and put the mount on, and then I cut it out with the drill bits and bobs stamped it out and then punched out the actual hole and it's got the uh, acetate roll on the back which kind of acts as a little kind of buffer but you can see that that kind of goes back on if I just put that in there somehow there you go and it just slides around like that so there you go and it's a 50 mil lens so you want to get a 50 mil lens um, this is the same uh, spread as when you look with your human eye so you you're basically what you're going to see your naked eye you can see through that so there's no zoom you can get zooms on it but if you're looking at a 1.8 lens because that's the other thing to bear in mind when you're doing this uh the, the thing about the lens the important thing is the aperture the aperture has to be um as low as possible so if you can get down to an f 1.2 uh, that's fantastic, but they're really expensive, even on the old SLR camera as well. They're not really expensive, but they're, they're still over 100 quid. Um, you could probably pick up one of the old SLR, just the lens, if you look around, you probably pick it up for 15, 20 quid. On, and it does a great job, you know, you get a really nice load of light in, and you can see really well with the night vision on. Um, so yeah, really, that's about it. So it's really just simple. And if you do the little clip there, it's nice because, you know, when you've kind of built it for an amateur amount and you've built it for a hundred quid, you can upgrade it. So you can always put on other lenses, you can put on other attachments, you can always got the ability to change the lens, which is lovely because you can, you know, once you start seeing the potential of it, um, you know, you can, you can upgrade the lens and get you know start working on other ways now the thing to do once you've done that well i would just say the first and foremost you want to do once you've got all the bits is just put them together and then just wire it up just make sure the positive wire is going into the top of the intensifier tube and you'll see the little hole where it's meant to go and then if you go around to the front of the intensifier tube, there's a metal ring. Now the negative lead's got to go to that metal ring. Now it's a bit touch and go. You might not have a soldering iron. I haven't got a soldering iron. I've got to get one because I want to build this really well and make it really strong. Um, but basically, I've just, for the minute, just to see it working, just to see it all kind of come together, uh, I just literally taped it on and I've just put the tape on. It's even a bit of touch and go at the moment. I still have to kind of adjust it sometimes. But the thing is, I know it works and I'm getting an image out of it and that's the main thing. I want to see it working and once that's done, I can then work on it. But a nice way of doing that and putting it around the tube is you just get some little drain pipes. Um, I've got a, a, a looked into it. You can, you, know, you can do it with a fishing, like a fishing rod holder you can put that on as well but yeah you kind of want to get this distance as tight as possible but also bearing in mind that you've got these wires coming in so to get the best result i mean that's not bad at the moment the way just with that tape on but to get the best result you want to you want to insulate the whole tube because if you just any like pin pinprick of light coming in anywhere where you're where the tube is it's going to intensify that light and make it bright. So all you want to be intensifying is what is coming through the actual lens. So when you're looking through the lens at the sky or wherever you're filming it, that you can just basically see whatever you're seeing there and you're not getting intensified light from other sources. you just got a clean tone. Or another way I've seen doing it is 
people literally were just putting on cardboard tubes from um you know from the post office you know you roll posters in so you could just use one of them now you can also as well you could put a gain switch on it that's another way of doing it i'm not going to get technical with that pretty fairly straightforward but you just need a literally a gain switch going in between from the positive and negative running in between so you can adjust the intensification now but that works fine i mean i've got some good results with this and i've been looking for it and you know i can see it's rubbish over england at the moment with the cloud there's no clear skies so it's been really bad weather so i'm not seeing a great deal but looking forward to the summer and just to say when you kind of add it when you put the electrics on you put it on you can start if you can hear that you can just hear a sound coming in and then you know the electrics are coming in 